I'm Ben Kaminsky, coffee consultant and three-time United States Cup Tasting Champion. It wasn't until I actually started working in a cafe as a part-time job that I really developed this obsession with the preparation of coffee, the meticulous attention to detail. Espresso was really the first thing that I became obsessed with early on. It was that complex assembly of all these different variables, pressure, temperature, time, grind, dose, all of these things that really were only first starting to be discovered in their true form and also perfected by the equipment of the time that really caught my attention initially. In North America, some of the trends emerging in espresso culture are definitely just shorter, stronger coffees. Espresso coffees that really deliver that experience of balance between the espresso and the perfectly steamed milk. When you get that perfect harmony of milk and coffee, you can get flavors like chocolate ice cream and strawberry shortcake and all of these things that kind of just make this this other experience. Microfoamed milk is milk where the milk foam is so dense that we have no visible bubbles. So you get this perfectly homogeneous experience throughout the entire liquid. So the science behind microfoam milk comes down to just a couple elements, primarily focused around the protein in the milk. Those proteins, primarily being casein and amino acids, are wrapped in these tight bundles. And what is happening when we're actually steaming the milk and making that microfoam is we're introducing hot steam and water vapor at such a fine rate that we actually unravel those bundles. And what happens when they unravel is that they want to regain some structure and they actually wrap around the air. And so that is what produces milk foam. So one of the beautiful things about the Breville steaming is that it actually keeps that steam incredibly dry. That in addition to the fact that we have enough steam pressure to create perfect microfoam in a shorter period of time means we actually get a richer, creamier beverage. One of the most important roles that steaming milk plays in our perception of how the milk tastes is really bringing those carbohydrates, primarily lactose in the milk, up in temperature to where our palates can perceive the maximum amount of sweetness. So that really helps bring the milk and coffee into sort of perfect harmony. The milk sugars and milk fat play off the espresso coffee's bitterness and strength to where we get this like really amazing, harmonious, balanced experience. I think as more consumers are exposed to that perfectly made cappuccino or latte, it really becomes impossible for them to go back to that classical soap sudsy commodity experience. Really, that is what is driving the market and the proliferation of specialty coffee around the world. So the thing that you're looking for when you're looking for perfectly steamed microfoamed milk is that fluid viscosity very much akin to the consistency of paint. It's not at all that visual of dish soap, these large bubbles that you can see. It's very much tight, compact foam with absolutely no visible bubbles. It should look more like a liquid than a foam. That visual of having that split foam and you know espresso coffee in a tall glass those are the coffees that you see most in Europe. Whereas in reality, that is kind of the opposite of what we're looking for when we're looking for a really amazing espresso beverage. One of the reasons why Latte Art has become the sort of quintessential visual cue for quality espresso coffee globally is because it shows that the barista has gone through enough training to prepare a really top quality shot of espresso with that perfectly microfilmed milk and combine those ingredients in this really artful way such that you can actually get latte art on the beverage. It really shows that you're going to have a good experience when you take that first sip. So some of the things to look for when you're starting to pour latte art at home is that 
you want to start with perfectly microphone milk and Breville makes that so easy because their technology takes care of so much of the work for you. So just by pressing a button, you're gonna be able to get that really viscous paint-like microphone. Following that, you're really paying attention to two things, pour speed and also the rate in which you're shaking the milk jug. You go ahead and start pouring into the espresso. As the drink is about two thirds or three quarters of the way full, you increase the speed of the pour. And then as you've seen some of that actual foam come out, you slow the pour down and just drag it through the other side. That will create the point to make that actual design. These espresso machines that we have from Breville, it's actually so simple to get something excellent because they bring all those elements together in such a small form.